hello everyone welcome back to my channel so today i have a watch me work over this cute springy drip look it's it was for easter but you know this can look cute any color anytime it's still spring even though easter has passed and um so not only the drips but how i do these cuffs around the cuticle area some people call them unicorn cuffs just the ombre cuff around the cuticle area so you get to see both designs. So this is my client's previous set when it was freshly done. If you haven't seen that video, scroll down some and watch it. This is her nails after about four to five weeks. She only lost two stones. And it's pretty good. And I put a clip of her talking about it. Your stones just came off a few days ago. Yeah, they, they were on the whole time. So she just wanted to let me know she had only lost them a few days prior to her appointment <laughs> so i started off by of course taking everything off that needs to come off she had a tiny bit of lifting you can see on the left side of that nail or what would be her right side um just these first two nails you'll see and this is pretty fast but on that little top left corner you could see me kind of um lifting it away with the e-file and i'm using the poochie's nails coarse a bit of course, I'm not digging into the nail, and if you're not comfortable with the electric file, then um, that's probably something you may want to hand file or maybe um, hand file and clip off with some nippers. And so um, I just wanted to show you guys how I take off the um, 3D flowers. I just file them off. <laughs> like, it's a big secret. I just file them off. And um, I was trying to file around the stones, but they ended up popping up, so that's fine. But I usually don't file off the crystals at all because I don't like to, I don't want to mess up my um, bit with these stones. Well, if I do file them, I use like a, you know, a cheaper bit or an old bit or something. But it wasn't much to see. So moved everything. I'm using the skiver bit and I'm going um, around the cuticle area near the epinicium um, and getting off of the um, cuticle, off of the nail plate, all the dead skin that's grown on the nail plate. And I'm holding the bit as flush to the nail as possible. And of course, I always say this is sped up so it looks way more aggressive than it is. But I don't know if you could tell I'm, I'm holding that bit as flush to the nail plate as possible um, as to not cause any rings of fire, or any pain for my client. So you can see I was going from right to left and now I'm going from left to right. That's because I reversed the direction of my electric file. And that's so I can, you know, get it at a different angle. You can see I'm able to get, you know, one side of the nail at a, a little bit different direction than I was before and you know definitely experiment if you're going to be doing dry manicures like this with going from you know frontwards and reverse and just be mindful of that direction so right now I'm going in reverse this would be the direction if you were left-handed that you would work with the um from left to right that's how you would probably work just casually um but, you know, no matter left-handed or right-handed, when you're doing, you know, this cuticle work or dry manicure, try going both directions um, to get off, you know, the dead skin and get everywhere you need to get. And um, then I, you'll see on this, I'm trying to get this little piece of skin off. And um, so I'm because I'm going from left to right and that skin is kind of hanging that direction. Um, you'll see in a second, I flip the direction and go from right to left and that helps get the remaining of the skin because of the direction that it's kind of hanging or laying, if that makes sense. And this is the round bit and it's, it's not painful. A lot of people say it feels like a massage. Um, so you can see me going in the opposite direction now, which I'm right handed. This is the general direction you go from right to left with the electric file, or usually it's forward leaving all the lefties out and so you can see I'm going the opposite way and that helps get that skin off and then I probably went back the other way but 
I didn't insert that clip. So it's just a little back and forth. Some clients need this much attention. Some clients don't. It depends on, you know, it just depends on them and how they take care of their, you know, skin and how their, you know, bodies just naturally are. Some people have rough, thick skin and it grows back crazy and some people don't. Hers is about normal. So I cleansed the nails with alcohol, dusted them off, cleansed them off, and now I'm using the clear rubber base as a primer this time. If you notice in my last video, this is the poly gel hand. So she has a hand of poly gel and a hand of builder gel. So last time I used the protein bond and that's what I had been using, but I decided I wanted to try the clear rubber base um, for the poly gel hand just to try it and see if I preferred it. Um, she usually doesn't have any lifting in. And like I said, if you go back to that neon video, she didn't, but she had that little tiny bit and I was like, well, let me try something else. It's fine. So I'm using the poly gel and ice blossom from Madam Glam. Of course you can use code Tabitha with a Y for 30% off the Madam Glam website. And I'm using their poly gel type tool and 70% alcohol to manipulate the product and this is of course extremely sped up and i'm just applying that poly gel of course and just making sure it's as flush as possible to reduce filing you can see how i get it off the tube about how much i use for the feel and that kind of just takes some time just to kind of eyeball it and learn how much you need for like a full nail or a um fill but i definitely recommend this product especially if you're a beginner but even if you're experienced like try it it's uh it's an awesome product and many brands make it and i think you can find a lot of quality product out there from reputable brands so definitely try it and it just takes some getting used to but it's real easy because you can play with it all day and perfect it you know get as close to the cuticle as you want push it pull it whatever and then once you get it perfect cure it and then that's it so definitely recommend at least try it Grab a tube, a brush, some alcohol, if they have solution, and try it. And, um, I mean, you could do various stuff with it, too. It's not super limited, as some people think. So, I got a lot of questions about the brush I'm using. This brush is from either Hobby Lobby or Michaels. It's dingy, it's dirty. I use it for my gel. It was probably only a few bucks. And, I some people, um, I got a few questions about the name of it. That's what it was. So you could pause it and go back some, pause it, see if you can find it. <laughs> so I'm using the clear rubber base from the gel bottle ink on this hand too. And I just insert this to show y'all that I'm not going over the entirety of the nail, just near the cuticle area with the base. So then I'm using the Cosmetic Pink Builder and I'm going to just do a fill with that product and what you'll notice is that I start off with what's called a slip layer. And what a slip layer is, it's a layer you kind of polish on first. That's not what I'm doing right now in this exact clip. But you polish a thin layer first. That's what I'm doing right here. You see, I'm just doing a very thin layer first. And then I'm going to take a bigger bead of product and apply it. And that slip layer just tells the product where to go to. It's already wet and it's like, okay, join me. <laughs> join me here. <laughs> um, if you ever use Builder Gel, once you do it and experience it, you'll understand why that makes more sense. It's, you know, dripping a drop of water where water already is. It just flows into it, you know, it just goes. So I don't know if that even was a good analogy. <laughs> But um, it's a very good method to use, and a lot of gel techs use it. Like I said, experiment with it. If you're not familiar with gel or you never heard of it, definitely try putting a thin layer on the entirety of the nail and then go in with a larger amount of product. And I feel like it will really help you apply the product better and help it from running in the cuticle area and everything because it helps tell the product where to go. These are the limits in which I want you to go. <laughs> so, and then this product is also, um, has a thicker viscosity, so it doesn't really run much at all. It's a, a, like a thicker, 
it it says it doesn't level on the website, but I swear it levels like the tiniest bit. But um, so after that, I fall in shape. I didn't add a clip of that. I'm sorry, it's hard to capture. I have before a little bit, kinda. So then I'm going in with my cross cut bit from Atwin Industries, which is one of my favorite bits. If I just had one bit that I could keep, I promise it would be this bit because you can do so much with it. But I just mostly use it for this. <laughs> so this is the only bit I use when filing um, the builder gel. With the poly gel, I do use a um, a regular like fine grit smooth top carbide bit. And then I still go over it with the cross cut bit because it doubles as a buffer. So it takes the place of a hand buffer because you see that surface of that nail I filed, it has texture, it's smooth, it's leveled out, it's ready for gel polish, top coat, whatever you want to do next. And so this bit I use even when I'm doing acrylic nails, I'll use the carbide bit first and then I'll go in with this bit, like I said, instead of a hand buffer and it helps um, flush um, around the cuticle area very well and allows you to get that texture um, around the cuticle area that you wouldn't be able to get with a hand buffer without making your client uncomfortable. I don't know if you ever had a hand buffer at your cuticle area, but it can be really uncomfortable and concerning when you're at a chop shop because you know they didn't used it on the previous 28 clients. Anyways, so <laughs> these are the colors I'm using today. And a lot of them are from Madam Glam's new spring collection. And um, one of them, yeah, this one is from the Gel Bottle Ink. It's Tiffany. It's kind of like a Tiffany blue. And I really like how this color applied this purple. It's just so nice. I mean, all these colors, I, I like Madam Glam. Even though I have a coupon code, you can see I literally use these colors with my client. This color is called More and More from Color Club. And it's a sheer nude color. Okay, so I am using the Wildflowers Blue Striper Brush. It's the long one. You can use whatever brush you feel comfortable with. I love the Wildflowers brushes. I've been having them for some years now. And I've, all the good line work you see me do is with it probably just literally this brush for the most part. So this design is actually pretty easy. It's just having the patience to draw the cuff. And so you can see I'm starting with one side with one of the colors. And we're doing a gradient, if you didn't notice. So we're going from yellow to orange to pink to purple to blue and back to yellow. So each color is going to be, you know, half of the previous nail, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I draw one half of the cuff and I'm thicker around the cuticle area. And if I can get in focus, <laughs> it goes thin towards the um, side walls of the nail. So, and I kind of flip the hand over where it's, you know, facing the ceiling where I can see it from the other direction. Just kind of make sure it's not, you know, wop-sided or whatever. So you can see, again, I'm drawing the first side with the pink on the right. And again, thicker, a little bit thicker towards the cuticle area and it tapers in towards the side walls. And the, um, I kind of get in my head where I want to end it. So I decided I want, you know, it to taper off where her free edge kind of starts and you can see it kind of just tapers where the um natural nail separates you know from the nail bed and like I said the free edge starts so in the middle I just blend those colors together and I kind of I'll show a clip a little bit later but I kind of mix the colors on a you know use a palette I'm just using a blank form paper and kind of mix them together pick up both colors so make sure that middle part blends well. I'm not doing anything special except just going back and forth in the middle of those two colors. You can do this with whatever colors you want to do. Just keep in mind, you know, color theory, complementing colors, contrasting colors, and things like that. You mix a yellow on one side, a purple on another. The middle color may not be too cute. <laughs> so same thing here. 
and you can see kind of a pattern is I kind of leave a little bit the tiniest space between the two colors um, just so it gives me room to mix them so you can see right here I pause it I have a little bit of yellow a little bit of blue on the brush if you can see so then I'm using that and I'm going in between the two colors and I'm just going back and forth and blending them and I had to add a little bit more of the yellow on the side and I'm literally just going back and forth back and forth till it's mixed I did two coats of each of that process done so I'm using the Lac Matte Top Coat on the other hand because this is going to help with that drip wet effect. So if this part is matte and the drips are shiny, it's going to give a nice contrast to make it look more wet. Flashback to the other design. Um, I'm using the, that more and more, that sheer nude from Color Club. And I'm applying this color only to the remaining area, not to the cuffs that we painted. And it's really easy to apply. It's just like a mock cuticle area. This it was real simple, and there's no liner needed to do it. And I applied two coats of that because we wanted to, you know, not show too much of her natural nail because she had that poly gel previous sets. And so we just wanted to not make it super pigmented, but kind of cover it up. So I apply this Joy of Mia top coat only to the areas I applied the sheer nude, so not to the cuffs because I didn't want to bulk it out because I am applying the um, this velvet matte top coat. This is from Daily Charm. You can use your favorite one. Um, I liked it because it's no white. So I'm applying that literally over the cuffs. I'm just tracing. And the reason we did that because we like that contrast and that chalky look of the pastels and that ombre, it just made it stick out and it looked even better in real life. You had to be there to see it. But that's that. We'll show you at the end. So next is the drips. So this is super easy. I'm applying color up to, you know, where I want it solid. So you can go up higher if you want, but for sure I wanted that amount of space to be covered you know, with the drip effect. So I'm just drawing straight lines, just vertical lines up. And this can also go the other way from the cuticle down. Same process. Um, so I'm just drawing the lines haphazardly where I want them to be, different lengths, different spaces, distance apart. So then I'm going in and connecting those lines with a round, like a more round shape. Or like kind of a teardroppy shape you, you see what I'm doing <laughs> and then some of them you want to connect higher you see what I'm doing right here because it's like that drip has moved down that, that little glob has moved down further so that gives it a more kind of realistic effect so I decide I want to move you see I want to move this section up some and I fill in that space and that will make it um, give it a better look when it's finished because you want it kind of high and low. So I'm just taking a dotter tool and on the end of each one of these lines, I'm doing a dot. And then once I do all these dots, I am going to go in with the liner brush and taper in from the dot to the line I made. So you just don't want little, little balls at the end. You want to taper them in. You see how I'm just connecting it right there. And that's going to give such a good drip effect. So, so easy. I didn't do many of these because it's just it's really simple. And so I did um, these random dots. She wanted polka dots. You could easily take these dots and pull out a little tail, like a little tadpole, and it would give it that drip effect also. So I did two coats. I traced over it again. It was really tedious, not hard, tedious. And then on top of that, I did the Joya Mia top coat only on the drips. So only what we polished right now is where I put the top coat. And that gave it that contrast, shiny to matte, wet, drippy look. Um, Y'all just seeing me have a hard time figure out where, the, where I put the dots at. So like I said, I apply this top coat only to the drips, and then that is it. So I do recommend if you want some more inspiration to Google like drip effect, you can even use like Kylie Jenner's logo and just, you know, so you can have a more realistic look, but it's so simple. Just um, like I said, don't 
just tapering those dots. That's the key. <laughs> so this is the final look. It looks extravagant and very time consuming, but it's very easy and cute. Like I said, it's just a little tedious. That's it. But please tell me what you think below. Um, don't forget the thumbs up and subscribe, of course, and try it. Follow me on Instagram, tap the sky underscore nails, and tag me if you try it. Bye.